Hey everybody, welcome to another video. And uh, this video is hopefully going to be not too long, but I want to talk to you a little bit about negative painting. And I'm just going to spray my palette here, just getting it warmed up, warmed up, you know, ready to go. Uh, so this is mostly Daniel Smith uh, paints. So <clears throat> with negative painting, there's a few different ways we can kind of go about this. And I'm just going to show you a few different things we can do. So you can take a brush. I'm going to take my eight here. Oh, this is a mimic. Um, you don't need to do eight. You can use this with any brush, but this is what I'm using right now. I think I've got my Escada here, eight. So I'll just use my mimic. So let's just say I want to... Uh, Let's just do a painting with some leaves, or not a painting, just, we're just going to do an example of some negative painting. So I'm just taking some Hooker's Green, and I think I stuck some um, Green Earth from Daniel Smith in there. So one way, so negative painting is painting around the object, just to be, you know, super simple about it. Okay. So I could fill that in, and that would be a leaf, right? Or I could go this way. And I could take some um, Cascade Green. And I could do another thing. So this is wet, so I'm painting wet into wet. So you're going to get a different effect. But we still have, you know, depending on how much that moves. If we don't want it to move anymore, we can just take a little cloth and we can just kind of... You know, stop that movement. Um, and then we can kind of go in now that that's sat there for a little bit and just soften these edges just so they're not so, you know, outlined because that's just kind of boring. There. Um, and we could uh, take, what is, where's my favorite here? My Green Appetite Genuine. So we can just kind of, you know, and you can like, kind of shake your brush around and do a different shaped leaf. And then of course we go in here and we make sure not to get any water. Okay, so that is just a simple kind of demonstration of negative painting. You can do that with anything. You could, you know, you could paint around uh, a flower. So let's say I want to do like a tulip shape. I don't know if that's a tulip shape. This might be more of a peony shape. It's not really a tulip shape. And we can add some color in there to make it more interesting. And then once this line is dry, or, you know, a little bit dry, we could soften that a little bit if we want. Just bring those in a little bit. Um, we can, you know, start to develop the inside of this once it's dry. So we could, we could still make this a tulip, even though I didn't really paint a very good tulip shape. But we'd have to wait for that to dry. So let's go over here, and I just want to show you another thing that you can do that is really effective um, when you're painting animals. I do have a little, I don't know, I don't have very many up. I know I have a bunny. I feel like I have a cat, but I don't know if I do. <laughs> so we could do, um, let's take some quinacridone gold. And I think this is Daniel Smith again. Um, I think it is. And we could do kind of like a little... I don't have a whole... I didn't leave, give myself a whole bunch of room, but that's okay. And I'm just going to soften that.
And let's go down here, add in some Minnesota Pipestone Genuine. And honestly, I don't think too much about the color. Like, it's, it's really just kind of playing when I do this. Um, just going to add a little bit of color in there. Bring that down. So I'm not sure if you can kind of get what I'm painting here yet. It just possibly looks like another leaf, doesn't it? Um, and I just want that to be a little bit light. Just going to let that run a little bit. So when you're doing watercolor, you know, and things start to move, you might, oh, that's not where I want it to go. Just don't panic. Just, it's all okay. This can all work out. Um, let's just, this is not moving anymore, but that's okay. So we could go back in here with um, just something else. I don't know. Yeah, this is still a little bit dry. We could do a little down a little bit. This is the secret to loose watercolor painting, or one of the secrets. There's actually a few. <laughs> and it's not really a secret. And if we want, we can just kind of soak some of that up. It doesn't hurt. Just get that out. Um, let's go back in here. Just just really loosely. And let's add some of this uh, burnt sienna down here. So you can see where I'm getting at. I mean, obviously I'm not going to develop that whole painting. And these are really bright green eyes, but that's okay because we're going to add some... Um, I think I'm going to add some Van Dyke and see what that does to them. There we go. So that kind of adds a little bit more uh, realistic to it. Ooh, a little bit much, but that's okay. I still got some green in there. And then, of course, you know, down here I would, you know, darken this up because it's going towards the nose. And uh, then I would start to develop the ears and whatnot. So you can see um, how I use negative painting to start around the eyes. And, and then I have some white of the eyes. So you can use that for lots of different situations. Um, you know, leaving the white in there or um, just giving yourself some, shape, some, some shapes in there. You don't have to leave it white. So you can see that this, this is tinted green a little bit. But now I could go in there and say I want to make that a, um, like an orange leaf. So I'm going to use this quinacridone burnt orange, which I think is from Core. And I can go in here and just kind of work this in. And if this was, I mean, it would look better if there was like a flower and a little bit of a thing there. And it was attached to some other stuff going on. I'm going to put some other colors in there to make it interesting. These are like kind of like a fall leaf. And then, you know, I could develop this and bring this over here and make this one kind of more brown. That's still quite wet. But you can see, I'm just developing that. And then we've got, we've got a nice, uh, loose, interesting kind of leaves here. And so once this is dry, if I'm not satisfied with that, I'm going to show you what we can do um, in a second once this is dry. I'm going to come back. Okay, so I have dried that with a blow dryer. You can use a blow dryer or a heat gun. Um, I don't often do this when I'm doing watercolors, but sometimes for video purposes it can be necessary because I don't want to have to come back later. I want to get this video finished. I need to get these videos done for you guys. So you can see how this is kind of smoothed out, but that's okay because that adds. It's still, when you look at it overall, it's still shows us two eyes, but when you look at it kind of like this together, it doesn't really look like that. But we can develop that by doing some more kind of negative painting. But what I wanted to show you is these leaves. So now that I've got that, I'm going to come in with some Zoocyte Genuine, 
which is again from Donna Smith. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to add, and you know what, I'm going to add my favorite indigo. Um, my favorite indigo. I'm going to add one of my favorite colors to use when I'm painting florals and leaves is indigo because you get such a nice rich darkness, but it doesn't necessarily translate as like blue, but it can really make things pop. So you can see how I'm now doing that negative painting around the yellow and I just have gone back and forth. Okay, and so I can go in here and I don't want to outline it all because that is just kind of, mm, that just doesn't work. It's just not pleasing to the eye to like do a perfect outline around that. So I would want to maybe go in now with some brown around here. And we want to make this leaf shape interesting. You know, we don't want it, when we think of a leaf shape, you know, as kids or whatever, it's like, dur, dur, and we're done. But rarely would leaves be like that. You know, they're, they, they're more interesting than, than that, than what our brain immediately thinks of when we paint leaves. And these are just very simple leaves, like I could develop that, but I'm, you know, the purpose here is to show you the negative painting part of this. Um, and I can go in here again with my, and each layer will make this a little bit darker because, you know, as watercolor dries, it uh, lightens up. And we want this to blend here, so let's put a little bit of green over here just so that it makes sense. And let's bring a little bit of indigo over here just so that, you know, they kind of go together. And we can even leave some of that um, lighter around the edges. We don't have to around all. So that's, again, you know, and then I could go in with a little liner brush if I wanted um, and just kind of do some quick little lines in there. You can kind of develop this as much as you want or as little as you want, but you get the idea. Okay. Um, so for this, let's just do a little bit with this. Obviously, it's just going to be a tiny little bit, so I can just kind of go in here and darken this up. You can use any color. I mean, um, if you want to do kind of more whimsical feeling of watercolor and loose, which I really like, you could go in there with an unexpected color, like a turquoise or something like that, which would be nice. Um, there are still ways to do that and still make it look like a certain animal, you know, if you were doing like a, a portrait of a pet. So with this, we'd want to make sure it's very dry and I'm hoping it's dry enough. I say that and then I go in there. So I'm going to take a smaller, where's my smaller one here? I've got a smaller Mimic brush somewhere. I don't know where it is. I've got an eight. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here we go. We've got four. Let's try this four. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm hoping this is dry. It, you know what? Oof, it might, it might look, it might go out a little bit, but we'll see. I'm going to try this sepia color. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I'm going to try it. So this is sepia. Oh, I think it's by Daniel Smith. I'm not sure. So we've got, um, we've got a little bit of green in there. And depending on different things, it might be enough green. But we might want to add a little bit more green in there. Yeah, I think we do. And if you've got a little bit too much brown, you know, just just dry off your brush as much as you can and then just soak it up a little bit. Yeah, see it's leaking, it's leaking. It's it's going down there, but that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna drop some green in there, some more green. And then that's what we could do over here. Just to bring that eye shape back. I had a little water bubble on in there that I didn't realize. And I'm going to go in here. So this color here is uh, Burnt Umber, I believe. Yeah, it's Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber is probably my go-to brown in acrylic. And this is not looking like a... This is all of a sudden looking like a human eye. Okay. And I just want to make sure that that goes out a lot. And you know, so 
So at any point in watercolor, you could be like, well, that is not what I want it to look like. Just let it dry and then go back in again. So you can kind of still work with this and change this as much as you want. And and uh, we could we could put in a little bit over here just to show. We don't want to outline the whole thing, but just to show that. I keep forgetting that I need to do this angle. And just soften that a little bit. Just to bring that that edge out a little bit. And, you know, take this down here a little bit. All right. So, um, I hope that has given you just a little bit of an uh, idea of negative painting and how you can use it for florals and, and uh, like, eyes. Um, and now I just kind of want to do a quick flower painting for you and show you how I would use it in my typical paintings that I do for flower. But first, I've got to get more water because this water is no longer clean and there's hardly any left in it. So I'll be right back. <laughs> 